Hi, so I want to touch on drawdowns today. A lot of our traders are futures traders, in fact also Forex traders as well. And when we're day trading, we need to be able to deal with drawdowns and understand what they are. So I want to go through a few things. I want to show you a live small account that I started in June and, and discuss recent drawdown and, uh, and you know how we can sort of get over that, measure it, uh, and understand these things happen. So first of all, uh, a drawdown refers to how much an investment or a trading account is, is down from its peak before it recovers back to the peak. Uh, so uh, at some stage we will get some losses. And last week, and this is why I'm doing it now, we had our first red week with our automated strategy builders uh, in three months. Uh, so I thought this was a good time to actually do that. Uh, and go through what's happened since. So the time it takes to recover from a drawdown should also be considered when assessing drawdowns because basically a drawdown is like a hole. You dig a hole uh, and we're going to go through some things uh, in, a little, in a little while. Uh, but you've got to fill that hole, but you can't be in a rush to fill that hole. You've got to be sensible when you're re-optimizing strategies. So drawdowns and losses are not necessarily the same thing. You know, most traders view a drawdown as a peak to trough metric, and that's all it should be. Okay, you've got to accept it. Uh, and that, but while losses are typically uh, referred to the purchase of a price relative to a current uh, exit price. Okay, so for me, drawdowns are when market behaviour changes due to data or news reactions. We had one last week. So we get new support and resistance zones. Um, so those levels change. Uh, increased, decreased volatility happens and volume. Uh, so it's almost like a reset. The groove has changed. So when it, with, with any trading strategy or multiple trading strategies, if you're, you're trading the same instrument, that groove will change when there's a big data reset. And it's understanding how to get over that that's very important. So uh, <laughs> I call it SOD's law. There's no right time to start trading a particular strategy. There's no way to know when these resets in behavior can occur. They just happen, okay? Uh, there could be a massive miss on CPI data, for example. It could be an NFP uh, complete miss, massive news uh, from, from around the world. You just cannot predict when those happen. The only time you know that's happened is when your strategies start to lose, okay? Um, we can restrict that loss. Uh, we can have strict max drawdown uh, rules to reduce the hole that is dug, basically. So when we develop our automated strategy builders, we collect that data every month and we, we always optimize to keep that max drawdown uh, to, to the lowest point while still being able to achieve good results. Um, but if that max drawdown in the data gets exceeded, we switch it off, okay? Um, you need that solid foundation for re-optimizing strategies so you can understand how the grooves change uh, and so that you can build those strategies again or slightly re-optimize, making those adjustments, uh, making them more aggressive when you make it uh, to get that risk-free sort of element in there, especially if volatility is increased. Uh, so you can fill that hole again. And that's, that's what it's about. It's about filling the hole. It's not trying to dig it deeper, uh, but it's having a sensible approach to filling that hole. So you've got to take the longer term view and measure the average drawdowns over time. It's not, uh, I have a bad week, I'm going to give up. Okay, It's about understanding that drawdowns happen. Uh, having the longer term view uh, over a quarter, over a year of how your account size is growing and how you develop those strategies to continue that growth. Uh, there's no straight line in trading. It won't go straight up. You will not uh, go 100% win rate and you, you, know, you will have losses. You'll have those drawdowns. Uh, you've got to be more mechanical when you see those drawdowns. Got to look at those averages, uh, that metric from peak to trough and then back to peak again. Uh, it's just, it's in the mindset to actually then re-optimize your strategies, look at that behavior, look at where those new support and resistance zones are, look at those confluences and re-optimize and get going again.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the live account. So I started, I mean, this live account's been open for a long time, um, but I just used it for data basically. Um, but I started this um, in mid June 2024, making this video on in mid mid September, so three months. And last week was our first red week. We've had small drawdowns in the past, uh, and we can see we started at twelve thousand dollars. We're at seventeen thousand six hundred sixty-one now, just using our automated strategy builders. Um, and so we've had an increase in account size of forty-seven percent. Last week, uh, this was the big drawdown, step drawdown here, uh, and this happened it, uh, last week. And we, we, you know, we had a five percent drawdown on the account size. Okay, uh, when we look at the previous drawdown this month, uh, we we went from sixteen three four one down to sixteen oh nine eight. So it was a, it was less. So last week was the biggest drawdown we've had. Okay. Um, after this drawdown, the recovery time was about a week. It was flat. Um, it wasn't a massive drawdown, so we didn't need to really do too much uh, re-optimization. Levels didn't change that much. Uh, it was one of those times where we, you know, it wasn't bad luck, but it was more to do with um, the more conservative. Uh, sort of break even points where sort of whether an instrument moves and I only trade copper and oil where it moves through a certain point we make it risk free uh, that was the, the start of it but then we recovered really really well and made uh, more money in the, in the account the profit got really well we leveled for a while and then last week we had this big move down from 17,497 to 16,673 so a 5% drop okay I didn't worry. All I did was this weekend, I had to re-optimize. The groove had obviously changed. There was a big data uh, point last week that actually uh, changed things around. Uh, and then this week, we can see we've recovered and got to new highs. We've got that new peak this week. Then we have had a slight drawdown and then pulled back again. But this 17661 is still higher than that original peak when we had that. So it's so a peak to trough to peak. That's all it is. Understanding that you've had the drawdown. Uh, again, if you're if you're halfway through the week and, you, and it's the biggest drawdown you've had, you switch off and you wait for the week to finish, collect the data, understand the behavior, understand the new groove and re-optimize. What I talked about in, in the slide deck just a minute ago was actually having that longer term view. So here, we can see, yeah, we had a drawdown, we came back again, we've had big growth, and we've had a massive uh, peak to trough, then we come back up again. But this is what's happened during this month, okay? But if I look back at, over the year, okay, this becomes very, very interesting. We can see here, I just had the account open, we just 12,000 and something, uh, and every month it just took $12 for the data. Really, I just use this for the test rig uh, for, for our software. But this is when I started using uh, the, the automated strategy builders on, the, on a, what I class as a small account. So it starts at $12,000. Uh, and I share these templates with, with all of our users for the automated strategy builders. And as we can see over that time, it's not been a straight line, but we've had good growth and we're getting towards that 50% growth and it, we're just at the three month time. We can see we've had flat points here in this overall view, that longer term view, stepping back and looking. We can see we did have, a, a, you know, 16,336 down to 16,162. Uh, but again, this massive drawdown that we had last week is just a little blip. Uh, when we're looking at the longer term view, we can look at month on month, we can see those average uh, drawdowns. Uh, and again, when we when the average drawdown is 3% uh, and we recover within six days, that's been the norm over the last three months. Last week was a 5% drawdown. So that's over the average. So we have to stop, we have to reset, we have to rethink, understand how the strategies aren't behaving anymore and re-optimize them, even down to, uh, you know, we change the time frame on, on one of the strategies. Um, and then understanding that other strategies actually would benefit from these resets. And I'm going to go through that now. So, so again, 
this is real it's a live account and I've been sharing this on our discord group and everything as we've been going along every week uh, and this is real trading you will get drawdowns you'll get nice big increases in value but again it's back down to sod's law okay so for example we get a new customer that comes on at this point gets the ASB he's using my templates and he gets the red week that's sod's law we don't know when those things are going to happen but we can see over time that there is good growth as long as we understand how uh, to to identify that groove and to re-optimize and we do help with that a lot so let's just reduce that down uh, so what I want to do now is the, the first trade this week was a range breakout so we've got different strategies for different market conditions and and basically different behaviors so we know when the London open a copper is at, for example we measure that opening range uh, we get the the confirmation we've got lots of fresh air you know over the last couple of weeks we've not had a lot of fresh air it's been very rangy uh, but it automatically found the fresh it got the fresh air it got the confirmation from the buy step heat map traded and it was a great trade but what i want to do is just scrunch, scrunch out a little bit you see we didn't have a trade for quite a while uh, last week or so if i put the previous zones on here this is why okay these zones previously these support and resistance zones were running along these prices and we were you know we weren't quite right with the opens we can see here the opens are just before or just below or above these zones but what happened last week with the data we broke these zones okay so they stopped printing because the support and resistance levels had changed these new ones were formed up here and down below these shorter term 15 minutes so when we get the London open in the middle of fresh air we've got lots of fresh air lots no real resistance and the trade happened it, it worked it was very very good so I didn't re-optimize this but I understood that actually going into this week because of what happened last week we all the I mean this is on the 10 minute but these support and resistance zones are on the 30 and the 15 minute so they'd all changed that that data reset that behavior reset had changed uh, and so I didn't have to re-optimize this strategy because all of a sudden now we've got bigger depth between support and resistance zones these confluence zones so then one of the strategies that I that was re-optimized and again some of our and one of my community actually helped with this is that uh, we were trading we've got two we've got the slingshot here and what what was happening is we had a we have a five minute and we have a Unirenko 135 uh, but the five minute did not perform it was one of the ones that basically just fell out of the groove uh, and to, the 2610 is something that I've always taught with our users is a really good time frame uh, and one of our users said Paul can we have a look um, back at 2610 and see, and see how that goes and actually when we re-optimized we found that as really good and this has been a really good uh, so yesterday we we had two trades so one of the things with with a single contract of, of CL so this is a small account for me uh, it's at seventeen thousand dollars we don't go to two contracts until we get over twenty five thousand dollars so we're trading micros and we're trading for one contract e minutes uh, I have very strict rules about margin uh, and how many contracts to change to trade and it's all about building that buffer for drawdowns as well uh, it's not about making a bit of money taking a bit out making a bit of money taking a bit out you've got no buffer for those drawdowns it's important to understand that as soon as the margins available you don't start trading more contracts uh, so this this week's been very good yet this this was yesterday so with one contract we can't really go for runners now this re-optimization may find that uh, at the end of this weekend that we can we can actually let that run a little further but we, we what it's what call it's what called the target two club so we get the type one cell it comes down it pulls back get the slingshot it's there and then yesterday we have a very strict uh, we have a PL protection uh, so we have a max drawdown of, of thirty dollars. So once it goes over two uh, two hundred dollars or something like that, uh, we set it. So if it just you know this was a trade it was in, as soon as it pulls back a little bit, 
it takes it out, doesn't trade for the rest of the day. This is what's been really good. Now we've got that increased volatility because that was yesterday. The day before, we had exactly the same thing. So it reached that max drawdown. So we were at, it's, it's, it's a trailing uh, profit drawdown. So we're in profit and it doesn't allow it to pull back too far. So it always ends the day in profit. That happened again. Uh, yet uh, that was uh, the, the previous day and then again the pre you know the day before on the Monday so this is in the groove this this is what we this is the work that happened at the weekend to help us fill the hole was to back test this now this new time frame get in the groove get all the settings right now we've got that uh, that groove with the 2610 and we've got to the point where we were actually the peak is higher than when we we had the drawdown so this is why i wanted to make this video is that um i know for some people it's an emotional roller coaster those drawdowns but you will like you've got to accept and that's what happens when you get a tr a change in behavior uh, a lot of the time the only way you really understand that is you make losses um, but it, it, having that risk management in there, especially with automated strategy builders like the Slingshot or the Range Breakout, um, it's about understanding to set those parameters. So when we look at P&L protection here, for example, on our strategies, when we look at those, we've got a, a very strict criteria for entry for the max risk. So the max risk for this trade on a full contract is only 21 ticks. If we get a signal uh, with an entry and a stop more than 21 ticks, it won't take it. It has to have um, the, the confluence uh, of the, the fresh air and the, um, the, the confirmation from the bias depth heat map. So when we look at the bias depth heat map here, um, you know, we look at minimum required heat map, six out of six, okay? It's gotta be perfect. And then when we go down, you know, there, there are all the filters in there. But what we also look at then is the P&L protection. So the max loss per day is only $150. But if we get to $150, we trail that profit with $30. So, for example, if we go to $200, it's always $30 behind $170. So once we get to that that magical 150 we're never going to lose that day because it will always uh, use that trailing max drawdown uh, if it goes to 250 we're at 220 uh, and then so on and so forth so what we're trying to do is reduce that risk and that's what we factor in when we actually re-optimize uh, when we get that drawdown so hopefully that helps check out the links below uh, we're going to put the links in for the automated strategy builders and don't forget once you get once you lease those for ninja trader uh, you will become uh, you'll be invited to our uh, teams expert teams uh, where i share the templates that i've been using uh, on this small account hopefully that helps speak to you really soon